Chapter 298, Rose School of Thought Mr. Fu's Church Lumin was both surprised and unsurprised by the answer. He hadn't expected the Church of the Fool to have a large number of beyonders from the prisoner pathway, but he figured that, according to the Bible's description, it wasn't too surprising for anyone from any pathway to appear. Franco smiled and began to explain in detail. Actually, the prisoner pathway beyonders of the Rose School of Thought and the prisoner pathway beyonders of the Church of the Fool were originally one. They later fractured? Lumian hazarded a guess. Franca confirmed tersely. The Rose School of Thought is an extremely ancient organization, boasting a history stretching back over two millennia, even predating the Fourth Epoch, prior to the Cataclysm. Over 2,000 years old, Lumian was astonished. When he learned that the Iron and Blood Cross Order had been established only 200 to 300 years ago, he had considered it ancient. But compared to the Rose School of Thought, the Iron and Blood Cross Order seemed like a child who hadn't even attended compulsory education. Franca continued, The Rose School of Thought was originally an Orthodox organization in the southern continent. It ruled the Paz Valley and Star Highlands, where the government and the church were one, until the invasion of the northern continent's countries. When the invasion occurred, they lost their country and went underground, becoming clandestine. On the one hand, they resisted the colonists and attempted to expel them from the southern continent. On the other hand, they frequently caused terrorist attacks in the northern continent. <laughs> this actually had no effect on their resistance to colonization. Instead, it incurred the hatred of the people of various countries. Of course, their primary goal might not be this. Perhaps it's purely for blood sacrifice and certain rituals. How did they fracture? Lumin was more concerned about this question. Franca leisurely paced two steps in the living room. The Rose School of Thought has held different beliefs for ages. Their core principle revolves around the notion that willpower is born from diverse desires, capable of reshaping reality and achieving incredible feats. Yet, there is a divide in how they approach these desires. Some adhere to indulgence, embracing passionate cravings at all times, even resorting to bloody or primitive sacrificial rituals to bolster their willpower. On the other hand, the Temperance faction, working from the potion's names, advocates for suppressing desires, keeping them pent up within their hearts, only unleashing them during critical moments to unleash formidable forces. Hence, one faction is known for indulgence, while the other is the Temperance faction. Prisoner. Lumian silently echoed the name of Sequence 9 Potion and pondered. I reckon the Temperance faction has got it right. Any sensible person would think the same. After all, the body is like a cage for the heart, and the world is a cage for the body. Madness must be curbed, and desires must be reined in. Franca sneered. But there will always be a few with a few screws loose. After indulgence, all that's left is madness they'll barely be able to retain their basic faculties. No wonder the werewolf reacted that way. It seems he truly belongs to the Rose School of Thought. If the others in their ranks share his mindset, it only confirms their strength. Surviving to this day without wit would demand remarkable strength. Lumian's thoughts carried both mockery and vigilance. Franca gazed out the window, watching the daylight grow brighter, and spoke. In the beginning, the Indulgence Faction and the Temperance Faction barely tolerated each other. If you ignore me, I won't meddle with you or the people you protect. But later, the Indulgence Faction started claiming that the Chained God, whom both factions believe in, is actually the embodiment of some evil god. Some evil god? Giving in to desires? Lumian's brow furrowed as he sought confirmation. Mother Tree of Desire? Yes, Franca smiled. Someone you know. Or rather, a deity you know. No, I don't want to know her at all. The Rose School of Thought actually believes in the Mother Tree of Desire. The werewolf's investigation of the Savoy mob's information seems more complicated than I suspected. Does the Bliss Society have any connection to the Rose School of Thought? Or do they withhold such information? Lumin fell deep into thought. Franca sighed sincerely and said, Powers related to desire can be quite useful. But why can't they be used for the right purpose? Blame it on the evil god? Lumian cautioned his companion. It's best if you don't try. Franca smiled sheepishly and said, I still know what I can try and what I shouldn't. 
I understand the dangers posed by evil gods better than you. Yes, later on, the Indulgence faction launched a surprise attack on the Temperance faction and inflicted severe injuries. The remaining members of the Temperance faction fled in a sorry state and were hunted down for a long time until they found protection under Mr. Fool. I've heard that Saint Sharon from Mr. Fool's church was once a member of the Temperance faction. Likewise, for the angel of the Holy Spirit beside Mr. Fool's throne. The Indulgence faction is terrifyingly powerful to be able to hunt down the angel-led Temperance faction and send them scurrying. There's no doubt they have angels, and not just one. And Mr. Fool's church can protect the Temperance faction. After hearing this, Lumion gained a rough understanding of the Rose School of Thought's history. He grew more confident in the Church of the Fool's strength and associated some of the names from the Bible with significant figures in reality. Simultaneously, he understood why the Knight of Swords, the other holder of a minor arcana card, intended to blow up the Rose School of Thought's weapons warehouse. <laughs> Should we stop calling it the Rose School of Thought? Can't we just call it the School of Indulgence? Lumion taunted. Franca replied in amusement. What a lame name. Do you think every secret organization is as uncreative as the Iron and Blood Cross Order? As they chatted, they heard Jenna's familiar gates approaching. Jenna opened the door and was taken aback to find Lumion standing there. Something happened to him last night, Franca explained. What happened? Jenna scrutinized Lumion but found no signs of injury. Franca briefly recounted the werewolf and Rose School of Thoughts leaving out the deep connection that tied her, Lumion, and the Church of the Fool. The more Jenna listened, the more alarmed she became. She felt that a sequence nine was nothing in the world of mysticism. Her determination to become an instigator as soon as possible grew stronger. After the discussion, Franca added, I'll briefly explain the situation of Zombie and the Wraith so you don't rush forward without knowing anything or sense the abnormality without realizing it. Compared to Werewolf, a zombie's greatest transformation is their steel-like sturdiness. They're unafraid of fire, bullets, or cannonballs. You need to hit the same spot more than five times in a row to break through their defenses. As zombies, as long as their heads remain intact, they are not in danger. They have also mastered decomposition, frost, and death-type spells that can awaken and control ghosts and corpses. A wraith can freely transform into a specter. They no longer have a physical body and are unafraid of physical damage. Their spellcasting abilities are significantly improved. They can even forcefully possess you, taking control of your body and making you kill yourself. After entering the wraith state, they can traverse different mirrors and use them to conceal themselves. Even if you activate your spirit vision, it's almost impossible to see them directly. If you encounter something similar to a poltergeist, you mustn't be careless. You have to consider the possibility of dealing with a true wraith. Lumion listened attentively and pondered before saying, are attacks targeting the spirit more effective against zombies and wraiths? Yes, I recommend the abilities of the Sun Domain, Franca said with a chuckle. However, I suggest that you run if you can when facing such an enemy. If you can't, seek help quickly. Lumion never found it embarrassing to ask for help. As he expressed his agreement, he proposed a new idea. They're all members of the Indulgence faction. Wouldn't it be better to deal with them using an ability to influence desires? If that was the case... The mystical item made from Shadow Branch would come in handy. Lumion had yet to contact Madame Magician. He planned to wait for Mr. K to reward him before deciding which domains beyond a characteristic to match the Shadow Branch. In theory, yes, but it might have the opposite effect, Franca warned him. After discussing the Rose School of Thought, Jenna recounted how she had been recruited as an informant and provided information about the Deep Valley Cloister. Franca genuinely felt happy for her. That's right. This way, you'll have a fixed source for resources, but the officials are very strict about key items. You can't rely on them completely. Lumion hadn't expected Valentine to be in the market district as well. He was concerned about his lack of necessary disguises. The mystery prying glasses could only be used at critical moments. After some thoughts, he said to Jenna, Showing your devotion to the eternal blazing sun in front of a purifier will yield unexpected gains. You seem very experienced. Jenna's eyes darted around, sensing that Ciel held many secrets. Leaving three Rue de Blue Blanche, Lumion strolled back to Sada Babris. The more he delved into secret organizations, the more he sensed his lack of knowledge about mysticism. Lumion sipped a glass of absinthe and settled into his office. 
Just as he was about to find a more comfortable position, starlight oozed forth, forming a dazzling and dreamy door. The door swung open, and Madame Magician emerged. Today, she sported a beige shirt, a brownish-yellow dress, and dark brown leather boots. What's the matter? Lumion rose to his feet. Madame Magician grinned and replied, The friend I mentioned earlier, the one who can help you decipher the symbolic elements, has finished his recent work and is on a short vacation. I'll take you to him now. Lumion responded with unusual excitement. All right, 